For a while now, many have wondered will the king of MMOs ever be dethroned? Many have tried, but none have ever come as close as to getting the fundamentals down as well as Blizzard has as Star Wars The Old Republic. So does this game in its current state have what it takes to dethrone the champion? No. Does it at least have what it needs to compete against the current king? Sort of. Let's take a look at Star Wars The Old Republic. Star Wars The Old Republic doesn't push any benchmarks when it comes to the game's presentation, but on that same note, the game looks outright amazing when compared to other games of the genre. You can see that Bioware obviously had the same attention that Blizzard had when they were designing World of Warcraft many years ago. That less means more. The Old Republic's graphical presentation is the new modern standard for current computers, meaning more people can play this game. Even on the highest settings, this game is getting nowhere near a crisis, or more accurately, this game's not even looking like the lowest settings from Final Fantasy XIV. But that's actually a good thing. However, there are some issues with this game's graphical presentation. The draw distance for this game is just criminal. Items that are no more than a few yards away appear flat and lifeless in the distance, and as you approach them, they literally grow in the full detail. This makes even industrial areas seem alien. Character customization is pretty robust when compared to other games of the genre, but that isn't really saying much because most of the games of the genre don't really have much on offer. The Old Republic is very stylized with its visuals, so if you're playing as a creative character that looks exactly like yourself, you might as well toss the idea out the window right now, but you will be able to create some very unique looking characters. The Old Republic doesn't exactly redefine the wheel when it comes to questing, it more or less just breathes new life into a dead horse. One complaint that a lot of veteran MMO players have is the amount of reading that you have to do. By the time you hit max level in other MMOs, you'll have read a library worth of content, and you won't be looking forward to when you have to do it all over again. Yeah, that does sound kind of bad, but log 48 hours of game time into an MMO, and then talk. Bioware heard the collective sighs from gamers from all around the world and opted to make it so that every NPC in this game, human or not, will actually talk to you, ushering in an entirely new level of immersion that's never before been seen in an MMO. Well, paid MMO anyways. This strategy works well most of the time, it only begins to retire some when you're on one of the game's many flashpoints. Flashpoints are the older public versions of instant dungeons that you will find in WoW. Flashpoints can be done with anywhere from two to four people and offer the game's best goodies. In these instances, you're introduced to the idea of grouping of others, and they help you learn your role in the group's dynamics. But when you get to the later ones, you see that more time and effort was put into making the single player questing experience a lot more fun compared to that of group dungeons. Later flashpoints turn to nothing but linear trudges through long halls of enemies that all look alike. Most of the time, you won't even notice that you've been engaged into a boss encounter until after the fact. When you start your first flashpoint, you'll realize something that either Bioware didn't notice or they're hoping that you wouldn't mind doing a lot. Each flashpoint begins with a conversation with an NPC. It's cool the first time. But then you realize that if you don't get your loot drop, you'll have to do this again. And if you're really unlucky, you won't even get your loot the second time there either. It might not even be until your 5th, 6th, or possibly even your 20th time in that flashpoint that your loot finally drops and you'll win it, and you had to endure an unskippable cutscene each and every time. Overall, questing in this game sticks to the try and true. You'll be killing X number of a certain mob or collecting X number of a certain item to your heart's content, but it never really gets dull. You won't have to kill over 200 rats just to collect one rat tail. And this game actually makes you feel like you're more than just an errand boy when doing this. The story of the Old Republic is its greatest strength. Other MMOs have attempted to make the players feel a part of the main storyline, but it always ended up with you being a mute sitting in the background as the grown-ups did all the talking, and often taking the credit for your hard work. That's especially not the case here. Each class has its own storyline and each one centers around the player. Your character will actually talk and interact with others on a regular basis, making your decisions actually have an impact. Bioware has done an excellent job in crafting storylines that will keep the player engaged from level 1 to 50, and even tempt them to try out the other classes so you can see their storylines. The only real problem is if you're like me and chose to be a Republic Trooper. Even the Sith, to a point, and the Jedis can attest to this. You'll realize that any choice you make is for naught. The Old Republic takes place 3,500 years before Episode 1. No matter what we do on the Republic side, our efforts are in vain because we lose. 
Once I realized this, the game became way less fun for me to play. If they said this game takes place 3,500 years after episode 6, my feelings would be completely different. Honestly, you wouldn't have to change anything about this game to make that work. Well, you would have to take Alderaan off the star map, but... I mean, honestly, besides for that, nothing else really changes. Star Wars The Old Republic is off to a very good start. The game's fundamentals need a bit of tweaking, but they are solid as is. There's more on offer here than what most paid MMOs would launch with. Bioware has done a damn good job crafting a Star Wars-based MMO that can stand on its own legs. The game's solo experience is the best I've seen yet in an MMO, but that's also its major flaw. It's an MMO. The whole idea is to play with others. So it hurts this game more the fact that all the group dungeons are all just bland and boring. If you've been playing World of Warcraft for the past 8 years, there really isn't anything that you haven't seen before. But you see this piece of armor right here? I can carry this design with me from level 1 to a million if I chose to. The Old Republic had this ability since day 1, while in World of Warcraft it took them 8 years to implement something like this. Just think about that for a minute. My name is Quantum and I'll see you later.